Today we're going to be doing the 3 Looks 1 palette with the Color Festival palette. If you have not seen what this palette looks like, this is it. And I've done a first impression on this, I will leave that up in the corner for you if you want to check that out. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about this brush set that I also got, which is in the same collection. So if you're only here for the brush review, I will leave a timestamp on the screen for you if you want to check that out. If you're only here to hear my review on the palette, I will also leave a timestamp for that right here. So now when that is all set, I think we should get into doing the first look with this palette. So I'm going to start by priming my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. And so before we get into this, I just want to give a bit of a disclaimer and say that if this video is all over the place... I am so sorry. I filmed this already and I managed to delete the footage of the first look that I did. So I don't really remember what I set in look 2 and look 3, so what I'm filming now is technically look 4 and not look 1. So I know this is all going to probably make no sense to you guys, but just bear with me that if I say something in this look and then I repeat myself in the second and third look is simply just because I don't remember. So this is not at all like my first impression or even second impression, this is like my fourth time using this palette. And so I think my goal with today's look is basically I want to not have to change after I'm done, so this is what I'm wearing and this is kind of like the color scheme that I want to work with, but when I look at this palette I literally have nothing to go on, so I'm kind of screwed unless I do something a bit on the neutral side, which unless you're new here you know I don't really mess with neutrals that much, but I think today we're actually going to be doing more of a neutral look just because I don't want to change. Like, I like this outfit, I'm going to be outside a lot, and I'll probably be wearing sunglasses most of the day, so I would rather focus on my outfit today than my makeup, which is not usually what I would do, so we're probably going to be playing with some browns today, and I know I also did that in my second look, so sorry. And also all my brushes are now stained blue because I just finished my 10 looks with the Jeffree Star Blue Blood Palette. If you want to check that out, I'll link that up in the corner for you, but Basically all my brushes are now blue, so that is a problem and I probably should have washed my brushes, but I did not. So let's get into this. I've been blabbering for way too long. I'm so sorry. I'm usually really good at keeping my intros very short, but I haven't filmed in two days and I haven't worn makeup in two days and I'm just really excited to be back. So I'm going to first start off by taking the shade down here called DJ and I'm going to pack that into my crease. Also I did not set my primer because I just prefer not to do that. And I'm also going to be starting with my darkest shade first, and then I'm going to use something else to blend this out. So like I said, I'm just going to be packing this all over my crease now, keeping it pretty low down and still making sure that when I have my eyes open, I can still see the shadow just peeking through above. And the first look that I did film that I managed to delete is not this look. Um, I will pop that up on the screen for you because I did take some pictures like if you want to see it. So basically I think the shadows that I used were these two shadows right here and then I popped, was it this one in the inner corner? I think that was it. So it was a very simple look. So if you wanted to recreate this, here's a fourth look for you. I'm just not the kind of person who likes to do the same look even twice. So. That is why I'm doing something different today because I don't think I've ever in my life done the same look more than once and I can't imagine why I would because that would be so boring. And I know you can tell that I'm not using the brushes right now and probably not in the second and third look either very much because honestly a lot of the brushes are just a little bit too big for my liking. Um, I really do prefer smaller brushes especially for my eyes so that is why you won't be seeing me use these but I do get into that at the end of the video and I do say that again I'm pretty sure so just giving you a heads up right now that if I don't use the brushes that's simply why because they just don't really fit my style of doing eyeshadow. So I'm next going to go into Groove, I think this was, yeah, and I'm going to use this shadow to kind of blend out the brown a little bit more. And I'm going to use my Inglot 10S brush to do this with because this is perfect for this. And I'm not expecting to get a lot of pink up here, but I just want like a little bit of an accent of that pink color because there is a little bit of pink in my shirt, which I know you can't really see, but I thought that would kind of tie it together. I'm going to go back in with that first dark brown that I put down and I'm going to run that on my lower lash line and I'm going to make this pretty blown out. Going back in with that fluffy brush now and I'm going to start blending this out. And like I said, I'm going to be pretty aggressive with this and bring it pretty far down. Also making sure that the outer edge here is blended. 
I'm then cleaning off my brush on my towel in front of me and I'm dipping back into the pink shadow and I'm going to run that right below. Also taking a bit more of that brown and I'm going to really pack that in my outer corner just to make sure that this is deep enough. So what I'm going to do next, because I'm not really happy with the depth of this, so I want to make it a little bit deeper, I'm going to go into VIP. I'm going to take this on my Morphe E36 and I'm going to spray that. And I'm going to use this to deepen this up a bit. And also just bring back some extra color, you know. And the shadow is a little bit crumbly, so if you're going to use this with more of a fluffy brush, just uh, try to pack it on and don't do a lot of sweeping motions because you will probably get some fallout. So I quite like how this is looking. I think for the rest of my eye, I'm going to use Banger, which is this. It looks very just light pink in a pan, but when you swatch it, it's got like a peachy gold duochrome shift and it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm basically just going to put that on the rest of my lid, I think. I don't know if I want to do a cut crease. Maybe I should do a cut crease. Now I'm going to try not to do a cut crease because I feel like this shadow is going to be opaque enough. Maybe I will do a cut crease. I'm gonna do a half cut crease real quick and I'll be right back. All right, the cut crease is done. I'm next going to go in with Banger, like I said, so the shadow right here, and I'm just going to put that on the rest of my lid as well as probably pull it down to my lower lash line a bit as well. So I will say that the shadow is not as nice on the eyes as I kind of expected. I mean, it's still nice, but it doesn't pack as much of a duochrome punch as I thought it would. So I'm going to go back in with a bit more of that purple shade now. And I'm just going to place that right above to make sure the blend between the two shimmers are looking good. And I'm also creating a bit of a diagonal line here where the colors meet because I just find that to be very flattering. And also just to tie this look in a bit more, I'm going to go in with a gold glitter just in my crease. And I just bought this Supernova shadow by Colourpop. I'm just going to trace this now in my crease. So I have a really hard time getting this pick up on my brush for whatever reason. And it seems a little bit crumbly, which is kind of weird because I've never used this before. And even when I swatch it on my hand, it almost feels a bit like dried out which is kind of shocking because like I said I've never used this before maybe if I just shake it up a little bit wow that is so lackluster can you even see this I'm gonna find something else because this is not doing it for me so I guess I might as well try another new one while we're here so this is one from flower beauty that I've yet to try and this is in the shade bomb so let's swatch this first on my hand and see oh my god like do you see that difference <laughs> I feel like this is going to be a lot more successful, so I'm going to try this one instead. So I like how this is looking now, and I'm going to finish up the rest of my eyes, but first I want to put this green in my waterline because I do have some green in my top. Maybe that doesn't exactly match. Maybe I'll do... I'm going to do this one instead. This is by Sephora. This is a Sephora collection pencil. This is no longer available, so I don't know why I keep looking for the name, and I'm so sorry about that, but I'm going to put this in my waterline, then I'm going to do some black liner or mascara, and I will be right back. So this is going to be the completed eye look. I actually really like how this turned out, even though it's definitely on the neutral side for me. So for lips, we're going to just keep going that way, because like I said, I am going out afterwards, so I figured I would show you like a realistic lipstick option that I would actually wear out. Because a lot of the time when I go out, I don't really wear like a very bold lipstick because like I said, I'm a, I've said this before, but I'm a very messy eater and I'm just messy in general. So I don't want to have to baby my lipstick if I'm out like doing stuff. So I'm going to use my Ludwig by Kat Von D. And then on top of that, I'm just going to put my Fenty Gloss Bomb in the original. So that's going to be the completed look number one. I hope you like it. Uh, like I said, not usually in my style, but I'm actually really happy with it. So let me know what you think down below. I know a lot of you like when I wear neutrals and somehow you seem to think that they suit me. So <laughs> yeah, let's just move into look number two. For the second look, I'm not really sure where I want to go with this, but I just want to start off by taking Pop, which is this super cute lilac shade. And I want to put that in the inner part of my crease. 
and I'm going to put that right here. And then for the outer part of my eye, I'm going to go in with DJ, which is the darkest of the matte sheets, and this is a brown. And I'm first going to be placing this in my outer corner, and then I'm going to bring it into my crease. And just made it up with that pink. And I'm also just kind of blending as I go here. I'm not going to be using anything else to blend this out with because I want this to be as dark as I'm able to get it. And I'm also going to go ahead and take this same brown shade and pull this down to my lower lash line about halfway across. But I am going to leave a bit of room just in my inner third or so, or I guess inner half since I said outer half. I don't know, I'm confused, but I'm going to leave a bit of room there for another shade. So this might come as a little bit of a shock to you guys, but ever since I did that Dubious Place video where I did like how to make a neutral look more exciting, I've kind of been enjoying playing with some rounds. <gasps> Not saying that I will ever get into like neutral, all neutral looks, but I really do feel like some rounds are actually quite nice. Like I never thought that would be coming out of my mouth, but I'm not hating on this brown at all. And then for the outer V, I'm gonna go in with Rave, which is this very, very dark shimmer, but it has a bit of like a purple pink shift to it. And I'm just going to be using this to deepen up the outer corner. And I'm also gently bringing it into my crease. I wasn't going to really talk about how the brushes perform while I'm using it because I feel like some people might just be wanting to watch this video for the brush review, so I was gonna save it for the end, but this brush is actually so good for just doing everything. Like, I used this in my crease, now I'm using it with a shimmer. It's good for packing, it's good for blending, it's nice and small, it can be precise. I really like this. This is the 11 brush. I feel like that shadow really blended in nicely to the crease color, so now the question is what do I want to do on my lid? Do I want to just keep it to the pink shade? Or do I want to maybe do a baby blue? Maybe I want to do the green. So I think what I want to do is I want to take hollow, which is the light blue. I really wish that my camera didn't wash out these colors so much because when I look at this palette in the mirror, it doesn't look like what it does on the viewfinder at all. So I'm going to take this color right here and I'm going to put that on the rest of my lid. And I'm switching to my Morphe E36 brush. I'm still using a bit of a fluffy brush because I want to be able to blend this into the crease because I don't want this to be a very harsh look. I want it to be more of a softer look. And I am also kind of just mixing this in with the brown in the outer corner. I'm gonna go back to that uh, dark brown that we used in the outer corner here, the shimmer, and just make sure that I'm pulling this a bit more in again because I do want this to be a very dark outer corner and I feel like I covered it up a little bit with the blue. So I'm just taking a bit more and just gently fading this back in. And these shadows are performing so nicely. So I think what I want to finish up with doing is I want to put a little bit of a pop of the dark blue on the inner corner or the inner part of my lower lash line. So I'm going to go in with denim, which is this shadow right here. And I'm taking this on my Morphe M149 brush and I'm just going to put this right where I don't have any shadow. And just meet it up with the brown and then gently just fade it out. And then just in my very inner corner, I'm going to go in with this top shade, which is called Disco. I'm going to use that same brush and just place it right on top of where these two colors meet, just to mix them into each other. So I think this is going to be it for shadows. I do want to try to keep this look a bit more on the softer side. So for my waterline, I'm going to use Crybaby by Colourpop. And this is just a very lilac. So I'm going to put this in my waterline, then I'm going to do some lighter mascara, and I will be right back. So this is going to be the eye look all complete. I really like how this turned out actually. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but I really like it. For lipstick, I actually picked up one of the BH Cosmetics Cashmere Cream Lipsticks. So I want to try this, and this is in the shade Thirsty. And I feel like it's going to go nicely with this look depending on what shade of pink this is. So I've never tried this formula before and I don't really know what it's supposed to do, so let's find out. 
So it's definitely more on like the moussey side and it's not super opaque. So this might not look the best on someone who has a bit of a dry lip at the moment, but I like the color of this. I think that looks really cute. So yeah, I guess this is going to some of look number two. Let me know what you think. I really like how this turned out despite the browns. You know, who would have thought? So I will see you shortly for look number three. All right, so for the last look, I think I want to do a halo eye since I've now done like a normal eye and a smoky eye. So I figure it's just appropriate to do a halo eye. Obviously I could have done a cut crease, but there won't be any cut creases in this video, unfortunately. So I think for today's look, I'm gonna start off by taking Pop, which is this lilac shit. I didn't use this one, right? I don't think I've used this one yet. You know what, I take that back because I used it in the second look. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm going to take Sequence, which I know I've used this one too, but I used that in my first impression, so it's like a separate video. <laughs> so I'm going to take Sequence and I'm going to put that in my whole crease. To deepen this up, I feel like I could, I'm actually not even going to deepen that up, I don't know why I said that, but to do my halo part, like the inner and outer part of my eye, there are so many options here. So let's take a look at this palette now. I feel like I could definitely go with the blue, but I'm thinking I might want to put the blue on the lower lash line. And so I kind of want to go in with this shadow right here, I don't think I've used that one. I could also go in with fringe, which is more of a kind of bronzy shade, but that's not as dark as I would like for it to be. So I think I'm gonna use this. I don't think I, oh, that's so pretty. I think I'm gonna use that one. So that's called Rave. Didn't I use Rave in one of my looks? I think I did. Maybe I'll use VIP. Ooh, that's really pretty. That's the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to take VIP now, which is a shimmer, but I am going to use a fluffy brush because I need to be able to blend this into my crease. So this is my Morphe E36. And this is one of the more chunkier formulas, so this is going to look super nice and it's going to blend up pretty easily, I think. So I'm going to be putting this in the inner and outer corner of my eye as well as blending it into my crease, but I'm not going to connect it in the middle. Again, that's just personal preference and that's just how I like to do my halo eyes, but if you like to connect it and you have the eye shape for it, go ahead. So I am basically covering up that first transition shade that I put down because I pulled it up too high in the inner part here in my eye, so I had to kind of pull it up higher everywhere else too, but I don't really mind how it's looking. It's just not what I thought it would look like when I first started, but that's okay. And then for the inner part of this, ah, man, there's so many things that I want to do. I kind of want to use the gold up here. I kind of want to use the pink. I also kind of want to use the green. I kind of want to use the blue. I feel like all of these shimmers would look really pretty, even this one. I'm kind of leaning towards just taking the pink and then what if I take the light blue and then I do the dark blue on the lower lash line? Could that be kind of cute? But then again, I haven't used this one, but maybe I'll use this in my inner corner. I think that's what I'm going to do. So maybe I'm going to take this one right here, which is called Hollow. And I'm pretty sure I used that in one of my looks already. And this is one of those shadows that is not like super intense. It's also a little hard to pick up on a brush, but I am going to spray this. And I'm going to pop that right in the middle here. Also going to slightly bring it into my crease but I do want there to be a little bit of that pink kind of poking through all the way up here and just in the middle of this I'm actually gonna go in with disco and just brighten this up a little bit more so just right down the middle all right, so I think this is looking okay. Next, I think I want to do my lower lash line and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take denim and I'm basically going to just smudge this all the way across because I feel like that's going to tie in really nicely with the lid. And this is for sure one of the best shadows in this palette in my opinion. Like I did not even spray this and this is so nice. Oh, that is so pretty. And just for the very inner corner, I'm going to take Banger, which is the light pink. And I'm gonna put that right in here. I'm keeping this pretty focused just right in my inner corner. I don't like to blow out my inner corners too much when I'm doing a halo eye. 
So I think I am going to go in and just try to blend a little bit right above my uh, shadows in my crease here. And I'm going to take Groove, which is this kind of lighter pink shape. And I'm just going to use that to just bring back a little bit of a matte right over the top here. Okay, so I'm liking this a lot more now and I just need to figure out what I want to do in my waterline if I just want to keep this blue, which I think I do. And I actually picked up another one of the LA Girl liners because I like the one that I have so much. This is in the shade Electric, which I think is going to be pretty cool. So I need to open this because this is not opened. And then let's pop this in the waterline. I don't like to admit this, but I actually like these more than I like the ColourPop liners. And you guys know how much I love those. All right, so the eye look is done. I just need some liner mascara, so I will do that off camera and then I'll be right back and we can sum up this video, talk a bit more about the palette, talk a bit more about the brushes, and then I'll let you know my thoughts about everything. All right, so the eyes are done and for lipstick, I'm going to use a new one that I got on the, I didn't get it on the Ulta sale. I got it on Ulta during the sale, but I don't think this was on sale. Maybe it was on sale, I don't remember. But this is one of the Lime Crime lipsticks and this is in the shade Cupid. And I've been saying for a while how I've been wanting to get a kind of pinky nude and I didn't really have a lot of those in my collection. So I'm gonna put this on and hopefully that's going to look good with this look. I think it will. And this is exactly the kind of pink that I was looking for. So I think this looks really nice. So let's talk it a little bit. So I guess I will start with a brush set. So as you can see, I basically use all of these brushes except for the little fan brush that came in the set. And the only reason I haven't used this yet is because it came kind of crooked. So it's got a little bit of a bend here. And I feel like a lot of brushes do that when I get them. I don't know, maybe I, I'm so lucky, but a lot of the brushes just always kind of come bent or crooked. So I wasn't really even sure how to use this. I know a lot of people have said that this is good for cut creases, but since this is a little bit just not perfect, I didn't want to use it for that. So I don't know, that's just kind of been sitting there as well as this blending brush right here, which I've kind of tried it like on my hand and I tried it on my eyes without having any eye makeup on. And my problem with a lot of these brushes is just that the bristles are a little bit too long, which makes the brushes a bit flimsy. But the quality seems really, really, really nice. So if the shapes of these brushes are the kind of shape brushes that you like, you will love this set. But for me, again, the bristles on this brush are just a little bit too long for me. Maybe that's a weird thing to say, but I am also like so incredibly picky with brushes. I'm not really the right person to review brushes, I don't think, because a lot of people seem to have different opinions than me. And I feel the same way about this powder brush. This is the kind of powder brush that you would use if you don't like a lot of powder on your face because it's very, very, very like fluffy and not very dense. So it's not going to distribute a lot of product. So for me, when I powder my face, I usually like to have a bit of a kind of denser, rounder brush like this. And then I will kind of pack on the powder first and then I will kind of buff it away. But I can't really do that with this brush. This is more of like a light setting brush if you're looking for not so much powder on your face, which is not really me. Uh, this brush, however, is really, really nice. I love using this as a blush brush. I think it's perfect for that. It's nice and fluffy. It's just big enough that I can get it on the apples of my cheek without getting it on my whole face. So that is great. And also the contouring brush. This one is great as well. I like this a lot. So I will say like this set, I think is a really, really nice set, but you need to like these shaped brushes, like this kind of shape of brushes. If you don't like these, you're not going to like the brushes. And I feel like that goes with every brush and it's kind of self-explanatory, but just wanted to put that out there. But I do really think that, oh, I don't know what this one was doing in there, but this is like one of my favorite brushes from BH Cosmetics. This is from their marble set. And I love all of the marble set brushes. Some of them, again, are a little bit too big, but I like the overall shapes of those brushes are more my kind of brushes than these are, but I mean, these are just so cute. Like I couldn't not get these and I still think they are awesome. And I like the little box they come in. I think that is so cool. So I don't have any regrets with the brushes, but I don't see a lot of these brushes becoming like a daily brush for a certain item that I like to use. So that's, I guess, all I wanted to say about the brushes. Like I said, they're, I, I've never had any problems with the quality of the BH brushes. It's just a matter of, do you like these kind of brushes? If you do, you're probably going to like this set. So let's talk about this palette for a little bit now. So I feel like I've used enough shades to give a pretty, you know, decent review on this. And so far I want to say that 
I've tried all of the mattes and I really like all of the mattes in this palette. I think they're really good. I haven't played enough with this lime green matte, but in my first look it was really nice in my inner corner. I can imagine it would be really nice packed on top of a tacky base on like a cut crease or something like that too. But these are kind of shades that are pretty hard to formulate, so you know, if this doesn't show up like super nicely as a transition shade, that's probably why, and I wouldn't expect it to. But as for all of the other shades, I think this might be the only one that I haven't used because I just don't use this kind of shade ever. Uh, but as for all of the other mattes, I think they performed really nicely. Um, for the shimmers, I didn't really realize this in the beginning, but there seem to be either two or three different kind of formulas. All of these on the left side here are a different formula than the rest of them, it seems like. Uh, these are more on like the chunky, very foiled, metallic, intense glitters or spark. What am I saying? Shimmers? And I really like these. Like, this is my kind of shimmer formula. It reminds me a little bit of Juvia's Place, which you guys know I love. And then you have some of the other ones, which is this blue, this green, this kind of pinky shade right here, and also I want to say this one. These are more of like a sheer formula, which takes a little bit more to build up. You can build them up to be quite intense, but I really do think that those shimmers would perform a lot better with a glitter glue, which I just don't really use that and I don't feel like spraying it gets them intense enough for my liking. So, you know, it just depends what kind of shimmer formula you are after, but you have options in this palette, which I think is nice because not everyone likes the super intense foil shimmer. So it's nice that they put in a little bit of both. This one, I'm not really sure how to explain this. It's almost more like a satin because it's not like a chunky shimmer and it's also not like a topper. It's just like something in between, but I really, really, really like the shade. Like this is awesome. And the only complaint that I really have about this palette is what I said in my first impression that the color story is a little bit limiting. I wish that some of the masks were just a little bit different. I wish I had more colored mattes in here and not just pinks and browns and with a pop of this one. And this one doesn't really go with a lot of the other shades in the palette. Like that's my problem. Like if you're gonna have a neon kind of lime green, you would think there would be either a blue or a matte green to go with that because that would be a lot easier to transition into than just having to use a brown. And you can't really, I mean, you can use this with the pinks or the purples, but yellow and purple are complementary colors, so there is a chance of them muddying up. Like, you wouldn't want to use this in your crease and then go in with the purple to blend that out because it's just not going to look good. So I just feel like it's a li little bit limiting. I feel like they could have done just more with this palette to make it a little more special, but I mean, overall, I think this palette is great. I think it's good quality. I think it's cheap. I think it's the same formula that was in the original festival palette, which I guess I have discontinued because I can't see it on the site anymore, which is such a shame because that palette was awesome. And I really wish that BH would see this and just listen to what I say now. You should bring out a new festival palette every single year and then have a festival series on your site. I think that would be amazing. I think that would be something that everybody will look forward to. I think it would be something that people would want to collect, but they're not doing that. So this is going to be this year's festival palette and hopefully next year there will be another one and they're probably going to discontinue this. So I wouldn't expect this to be around forever since the other one is not. So, you know, if you want to get this palette, if this color story is something that speaks to you, I think you are going to love it. If you kind of feel like I do with the mattes, you might not enjoy it as much unless you use it in conjunction with another palette, which obviously when I'm reviewing something is not really something that I can do. So I am going to be harsher in my reviews on the palettes for that reason. If I was just a regular consumer who didn't make videos, I would always do my makeup using more than one palette. But like I said, having a channel, it kind of restricts you a little bit, but it also makes me have to be more creative, which is one of the reasons why I like reviewing stuff because I like kind of being put inside of a box and having to think outside of it. I think that is just so much fun. So I think that is going to sum up this video. Let me know what you think of this palette in general. Is this something that you picked up? Do you like it? Are you planning on picking this up? Was this review helpful? I hope it was. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'm just going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.